everyone. This is Matt from the Who Goes There podcast at the Tell Your Ride Horror Show 2019, and I am here with the director and some of the crew. Look at that. And then I said I had to say that, so I just want to say that. Thank That's you. That's so nice. Thanks for coming up. That's so oh, amazing. thank you. Very much. <laughs> you hear that? People are coming up right off the street to talk to the director and the cast and executive producer of the film Making Monsters. So why don't we go around and uh, you know introduce yourself and, and what you do in the film? Cool. I'm Justin Harding, uh, writer, director. Uh, I, I also did the editing and some visual effects. I'm Jonathan Craig, uh, actor in it, and. Uh, uh, it was shot in my house. Production designer. Production designer makeup. Um, made a mask and did, uh, made coffee and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alana Elmer, actor, wife, <laughs> mother. <laughs> Dale Andrews, I was the executive producer on the film. Okay, now you were telling me last night how this, this whole movie came, how Making Monsters came to be. It, it started with a phone call, yes. right? Yeah, so we've been making short films for a few years, and uh, Jonathan, who uh, ended up being in the film, um, called me randomly one day and said, oh, your shorts are awesome, you should make a film at my church. Uh, and he explained that he had purchased a church, and he lives inside of this converted church, and uh, does his prosthetic makeup out of this church, so it's full of body parts, uh, it's full of latex creatures, and it's got this amazing basement he showed me pictures and so I was I was like inspired by that church and by Jonathan and Jonathan said you know you, we can do something really cool here uh, as long as I act in it <laughs> so I don't think it went that way uh, that's, that's my story. I think he wrote it <laughs> and then, then it was just sort of like oh he's and he's like you said it'll be based off a guy like you and then it was sort of am I gonna play it like yeah I'll sneak in there and maybe then and then it just turned into what it turned into. So it was great. I remember saying I had two conditions. Yeah. One, I have to act in it. And two, who's, you wanted to yeah, camera yeah, guy. Gonna, one of your buddies was going to yeah. shoot. That, that didn't end up happening, yeah. but you acted yeah. it. Thank God. I, I love that in the film, the, when it was told that you bought a church, somebody bought a church, they had the exact same reaction that I did, where I was like, that's a fucking weird purchase. Like, <laughs> why would, But I mean, seeing it, it's absolutely gorgeous. And, yeah. and living in there, I can only imagine it's awesome. It's really cool. And it was really cold, too, in the wintertime. But it's a, it's a fabulous place. And I was living in Toronto, sort of downtown, in, in a studio loft. And it was always crazy. Just, you know, just a lot of people and a lot of, you know, it's just, you, can, you come back from a big show and then you're back, you're just still surrounded by people. But now, living out in the country, we don't, I don't have that. I have sort of peace and tranquility. And then I can go away for work. And it's crazy, but I can always have a good, peaceful place to go home to. And now, speaking of being freezing cold, you were out in the cold, in the nude, in the snow. Was that for real? You actually do that? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely for real. That's my frozen ass out there. Um, yeah, we kind of had, like, you know, I would be standing there in blankets, and, like, people had... Do we have little, like, hot potato things yeah, or something? Yeah, hot something bucket. that you were standing on? Yeah, like a heating oh. thing. And it, then it was just like, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this. So Lana, like, you know, and someone would remove my slippers and then, like, run back inside. And I was counting. We had, like, a Mississippi thing happening. There were, like, 30 Mississippis, and you can, like, come back in. And I'm like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, you know, like, yeah. And did you have to, to psych yourself up for that? Because I wouldn't do that. There's no way. Yeah, I mean, I think for the whole film, I kind of had to be in, like, a weird... I stayed, because we shot in such a short amount of time, we were shooting like late hours of the night, so it wasn't really like a chance to turn off and then come back on, so I was kind of in this like weird zone the whole time, and you know, yeah, yeah, I had to kind of be like, I'm like, I can fucking do this, I can fucking do this, and then I was like, <laughs> shiver as much as I like could, and I was like, see, it's not so bad, like, <laughs> like just trying to trick yourself a little, the Mississippi thing helped, that was yeah. like my saving. Can I add to that, because Alana's a dancer professionally, so she dances in, in endless dance shows that are put on by choreographers all over the world, and there's all kinds of shows that really push physicality and, 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 and push these different concepts, so I've, I've seen Alana naked on stages before, in shows, it's, you know, as an artist, being naked is not really a big deal. I think, you know, to you, I don't think it is. I I've think... never done it in the freezing cold, but it's true that there are, like, yeah, there's physical restraints or, like, you're, yeah, 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 yeah for you, sure. You, like, when we did, making the movie, it was never really an issue with you. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'll just, it's fine. Yeah. I'll just, okay, this yeah. land's naked scene. Okay, here we go. 
true. No problem. I, I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't crazy Justin, negotiation. He was like, hey, whoa, 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 let people leave the room. I'm like, dude, 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 dude. I just don't un- really understand why you didn't write a naked scene for me. Oh. And they say, is that like you don't like That's my body? You don't like my body? <laughs> we won't get into this definitely now. chances to show Dong. I thought you were going to drop Dong in the, that in the was, first two that minutes. That was my third rule. Well, yeah. Opening, opening scene. scene. Oh, is, yeah. Had some Dong? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was oh. looking. I was looking. Oh, yeah. I think there's a little butthole in there, too. He was cold. He had to run through that field, like, butt naked, you know? And everyone's being so sweet. They're like, don't worry, man. It's just not that cold out. Like... <laughs> None of us are looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in three layers of le- uh, leather and a mask on. I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what? That was the middle of February in Canada. I mean, that was the middle of February. It was yeah, February it was 20. Do you guys remember the date? It was like yeah, February then, 24th. Yeah. Somewhere in there, yeah. Like in Canada in February, it's freezing. And the actual idea, the script for that whole opening scene and the whole story was supposed to take place in in like a barren frozen winter land that opening scene was supposed to be on a frozen lake the script is a, is a snowmobile on a lake not an ATV on a field that's right yeah. and the two days before we started filming a rainstorm came and washed all the snow away oh, yeah. and in the moment we were just like okay well I get to the ATV now yeah <laughs> Thank, so, thank God, though, because looking at it now, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have pulled that off with Jar in the snow. No. There's no way. So for for people just now hearing about Making Monsters, <laughs> what is Making Monsters about? Making Monsters essentially is about a couple. They make a living with a YouTube channel that's a prank scare channel that he's put together and found great success with. But he the success comes at a price. He has to prank his fiance, and um, her reactions are amazing because she's actually. She believes in ghosts because she comes from a family of clairvoyants, and the um, the uh, this couple this couple decide to go on one final you know getaway for the weekend to party and to have fun because they're they're about to do an IVF treatment where they've agreed they're going to stop pranking and move forward and and kind of and kind of grow out of it, and that's the setup. And so the the story is basically this setup and these people going off for a for a weekend, um, but then once they get there, shit gets fucked up. Now, the first 30 minutes or so of the movie are absolutely hilarious. And it did, you know, you can always tell when there's a calm before the storm, but this did a really great job of of setting up that shit is going to go awry soon. How important was it to you to have comedy, and was there anything you had to scale back? Uh, Good question. Um, I think comedy... for people who have seen our shorts, there's a tone there. There's, it's always, it, it's always funny and scary together in this perfect marriage, and we're always trying to find the comedy and the, and the, and the terror. And, and with this movie, there was no way it couldn't be comedic with John in it. I, everything John does is funny. And as soon as we started talking about filming it with John in his church, uh, the, it was just, it had to be comedic. Like, I mean, we could do something darker, we, and we will, yeah, yeah. we will. But I wanted, I wanted it to be like. I wanted to tackle the tone of this and create something that felt genuinely funny, rooted in some reality. The comedy is kind of rooted in reality. It's not slapstick. It's a little over the top, but it's, uh, we really wanted to experiment with that and find a tone that feels different. That was, that's the whole thing with this movie. Can we do it? Now, I'd heard you say when you guys were introducing the film that you were his teacher 22 years ago? <laughs> yes, I was. Justin... Uh... Justin got brought into my classroom. He was like that badass kid in school. And he got brought into my classroom uh, by a vice principal that basically said, you know, one wrong move from this kid and he's out of school. And I taught high school film production. This was like his 11th grade uh, at the time. And I literally I sat him down and I taught him this program called Soundforge, doing like a little bit of audio editing. Nothing from him. Next day he comes in. Vice principal did the same thing. He said, so? And I'm like, no, he's perfectly fine. They were expecting I was going to boot him because I was, I was pretty tough on kids. And, they couldn't uh, handle my passion at that school. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 that was the problem. Yeah, so it just day after day, day after day, they tried and tried, and eventually they just gave up. Um, and I think Justin and I kind of developed that relationship. They kind of moved beyond... Um, the student and the teacher uh, sort of thing and, and we'd worked on things through his college years and he's done things for he was doing things for me here and there and then when we had an opportunity to do our short film Latched um, it was like a last second thing I jumped in as executive producer and it was just a weird series of events that I ended up being on that um, and then ever since I mean that did really well we premiered had our world premiere at TIFF um, and then all of a sudden it was like well let's do a feature and so, you know, so we went in and I ended up um, bringing together most of the financing for the, uh, for the film. And, you know, we made our first feature together, which is, 
a pretty cool story when you start looking at it. You know, 22 years ago, um, it, it, he was a he was a, a totally different like, what person. If did, what if I didn't take that class back then? You know, what, what where would we be? I have no idea what would, what my life would be. I, Could be back then. You'd, I feel like you'd be in animation or like art. Well, you definitely something do. in art. Definitely yeah. something creative. It was a yeah because it was an art school. Yeah. But that that class was com- yeah that class was really. Um, introduced me to filmmaking and I became obsessed. Very obsessed. That's all I did. I just started making films and I never stopped. Since. Yeah, and I I, used, I would be there like all hours of the night because like, he would be in editing and I would stay, you know, just because someone had to supervise him when he was there and I would stay and wait and wait. Um, but you know what? I also look at it too in the same way that he does. I look at it and go, what if he wasn't brought into my room? We wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be making films with these guys at this point in time. So, you know, it's kind of a two-way street. When you, when you start looking at it, it was like a mutually beneficial situation, which was supposed to be something really horrible and bad that everyone thought was going to be that, ended up turning into something, you know, absolutely wonderful. Oh, Dale. You always make me cry. I cried like five times because of you. Like, right here. It's just so like open hearted. So now you did the the mask design, right? Yeah, I Is... built the mask and then picked out the whole costume. Just was just like, yeah, just take. Like, can you just make it all happen? <laughs> I yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so is this something that you do often? Yeah. That mask was, was awesome. Oh, what, thank you very what much. What was your inspiration for well, that? Well, there's a, there's a guy named Alexander Peden from, like, 1560, and he made this, like, horrible-looking yeah. thing. Like, yeah, he'd it, wear this mask. wear this mask, because he was, he was uh, preaching this religion. It was against the government, so he had to go, like, hide places, and he had these secret spots to, like, preach. And then his family found this mask, and it was just, like, god-awful-looking. You can same. Google it. It's pretty, it's, yeah. We, we stayed pretty close to that reference. Yeah, and it was, and so I just fabricated, I just dipped, I took a, a face cast I had of myself laying around, and then I took an old t-shirt, dipped it in uh, uh, liquid plastic, let it set over the form, and then from there I just slowly built it up. I put like a, on a welder's mask for the to hold the base, and I just MacGyvered it from the you know the the bottom out. So yeah, uh, John's an artist in his own right. And his sculptures are incredible. Like you saw in the movie, all the sculptures in the movie John did by hand over the years. Yeah, every single one of them. severed heads and all the stuff that I never wanted to sell, except for the latched head that Rhonda did. Rhonda, That's yeah, right, yeah. Rhonda did the also did the ghost. Yeah, yeah. Rhonda's a makeup artist we use on our films. It does a lot of creature design, and then John on this did some special effects makeup. He did the arm cut off, the actual. Physical arm. Yeah, I did make the all arm. makeup was done by John. Yeah, and yeah, the breakdown, and then Alan Cook did the uh, the, the prosthetic on me for the for, the, for the, the end, and he and he's one of the best in Toronto, and so he worked out all the tubes inside, and so and he's a really good friend of mine. He's a very very talented artist. So we we just had a, a really good crew for that. Oh, yeah, the, the violence in this was actually really great. I don't want to mention any specific kills, but there's one. Where I was just like, damn, that's 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 good <laughs> shit. That's good shit right there. We could probably guess which one that one yeah. was. I'm, I'm sure you could, because it's, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's the standout. Um, so, where do you know when people will be able to see Making Monsters yet? Uh, right now, you can only see it in the festival circuit, and uh, this is hot off the press. We, we've only been in a few festivals so far, and um, we're, we're looking for distribution now. And there's a few offers on the table that we're that we're looking at. So we, I, we have no idea when people can see it, you know, in, in the public beyond the film festival circuit. But right now, it's going to be playing in Toronto, and it's going to be playing in Ohio, and uh, some other festivals around. Um, if you follow us on, on social media, we, we post a lot about the, the festivals. Um, but yeah, I don't know when people are going to see it in, in public yet. And where can people find you guys on social media? Um, our company's the Boca Collective. You can just Google that. We have a website. Um, Instagram's really good for, for reaching out, and Facebook. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, and Making Monsters Film. Uh, yeah, use the hashtag Making Monsters Film, and that'll have a lot of stuff on there. Now, I, I just remembered one thing. You had told me the other night before I saw the movie that this was going to be your first time seeing it with an audience. Yes, that's true. Is this all of your first time seeing it with an audience? It's it was mine as well, but you guys have seen yeah. it. Yeah, I got I got to see it. Uh, we had our Hollywood premiere two weeks ago. Uh, at Shriekfest, and we actually won for Best Horror Film oh, nice. at Shriekfest. Yeah. And we, it was good because we had our composer there, we had our lead actor, Tim, uh, lives in Malibu. Great hair. Yeah, yeah. Dude, beautiful. Yeah. So, beautiful. Yeah. He's so, an amazing... Yeah. Tim, I'm very disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> but, but 
he was after, he was there and brought all. So we had all of our LA friends and and all of that there. So when we won, it was just it was like this great eruption in the theater. And we went up on stage, and co-director Rob Bruner was there as well. So um, it was pretty it was pretty amazing to to have that. But uh, so yeah, so yeah so that was my there. first time. And John T, John yeah. went to the Berlin premiere. Yeah. For Fantasy Film Fest, John went went all the way to Berlin. Yeah. Uh, so that was cool. So you saw it there, the world premiere. World premiere on a huge screen. And, and you guys saw it also for the Tree Fest, and then Alan and I, yeah, we saw it for the first time yesterday. Yeah. So how how do you feel having seen it with the audience now? How do you feel about their reactions? Um, I mean, it was amazing. I'm like, I get so nervous. I was just kind of like sitting there, like shaking, and like, <laughs> like yeah. Dale and uh, John were a little like get it together. Like, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like trying to sip my coke, like, but but it was fun. It was fun to watch people laugh and you know be caught off guard by like the tone shifts like this movie has so many kind of like especially with the three different characters they have really different perspectives on things and they're kind of going through very separate experiences of like a situation and so they hold true to it and it kind of creates you're on this journey with them and it was fun to feel an audience stay with you even though it's like jump cuts that like in tone and in tone in certain parts, you know? So that felt really nice. I was like, oh, okay. Well, it was really nice that when the tone changed, it stayed changed. When the comedy stopped, you shut it the fuck down. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> there, was, there was one or two gags like later in the film, but you know, a lot of movies will do that where they, they make it serious, but then they just keep easing off the tension. Like you guys just went for it and then didn't look back. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that was the goal with this film, was to try to find that tone, to switch it up and to play with expectations. So from the very first frame, from the very first scene, the, it keeps shifting. The tone keeps shifting and it keeps changing. It keeps, I don't want to ruin anything for you, but it keeps, there's, there's twists right, off the, right, off, right from the very first couple scenes. And so when the movie actually starts after the opening credits, I'm hoping people think like, oh shit, I have no idea what I'm in for here because we've already fucked with the audience so many times leading up to it. And then, you know, it's, it's about leading the audience down the wrong path constantly. You think you know what this movie is? I, nah, you have no idea. Yeah. I told you I, I thought one thing for most yeah. of the movie and then I was wrong. Yeah, and, that, yeah, and, to, and to make twists that, are, that feel different, that don't, don't feel predictable. And things that you think will be a big twist that aren't really. So I, I don't know. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but that's but the finding tone is the joy for us as filmmakers, and and to do it in the independent world is really great because you have the creative freedom to do it. And I, so it's now is the time to experiment while we're still independent, <laughs> when there's not influence from other studios and producers who who are worried about decisions that that are being made that might be you know a gamble. And with tone, it's a gamble. With comedy, it's a gamble. It's so subjective. I don't know. With being independent and the way that we work, we didn't even, didn't care about any of that. Let's just go for it, and let's. If it doesn't work, it doesn't. It's it's okay. It's okay for us to fail because it's an indie film. And we're all in it together, and, and I'd rather experiment and I swing for the fences with it. And for people who are chomping at the bit to see some of your shorts, see what you what you do. Where can they find your shorts? Yeah, all of our shorts are on the YouTube channel Alter, which Gunpowder and Sky puts out. So they they create uh, films and and put together a great channel. So on Alter, you can find them. I also have a, um, a website, JustinHardingFilmmaker.com, and they're all on there as well. Um, so that you can you can find Point of View, um, you can find Latched and Cookie, and another short I did called Carved, all online. Right well, thank you guys so much. This has been Matt for the Who Goes There podcast for DreadCentral.com. Make sure to check out Making Monsters, one of the definite standouts of Telluride Horror Show 2019. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs>